this next lesson, we're going to take a look at how to um, load just a standard purchase order into X3. Uh, the purchase orders uh, within X3 can be utilized either for the purchases of inventoryable raw material products or non-stock ma managed items such as warehouse or office supplies and fixed assets. So to start, we're going to come under our purchasing menu and go to the orders and orders. We're going to come over, click on the new button, specify your order site, uh, the date in which the order is being input into the system. Supplier that we are purchasing the products from. Down here on the management tab, we have account information relative to uh, the pay to. For the supplier, we have the currency that uh, is going to be on the purchase order. We have uh, different types of exchange rate tables that we can set up within X3 for the purchases of these goods. Down here in the payment section, we have an internal reference uh, that you could use to populate things uh, such as a, a supplier uh, quotation number. Below that, we have the uh, payment terms associated with the purchase order. So, you know, if the supplier grants you 30 days or 45 days to remit payment, that can be defined therein. We have the settlement discount field uh, that can be used to indicate if uh, you're entitled uh, to an early payment dis discount if you wire or send a check to the um, supplier within a truncated time frame of maybe like 10 to 15 days. We have the buyer that's indicated here on the PO. We have our taxing information the invoicing site associated with the PO. This is going to be the site upon which the AP liability is ultimately going to be recognized on. We have the carrier who's going to be responsible for transporting the goods from the supplier's facility to our own. We have a delivery mode indicator over here to specify if the goods are going by way of ground or by air or by sea. If your business uses uh, ENCODE references, ENCODE terms on your contract uh, to govern things such as the point of title transfer, who's responsible for the insurance and the freight liabilities, um, we can establish uh, the ENCODE terms settings here on the PO. Down here at the bottom, we have an analytical dimension section here. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to um, associate a associate, uh, the cost of this order with a particular department or cost center. Uh, that can be defined herein. Next, over here on our lines tab, this is where we come to to specify the different products that we're purchasing from the supplier. So we type in the product ID field and tab through the field. And that pulls up this uh, menu here for the different requirements that we may wish to consider. So this can be a useful tool. Um, if I click down in the grid section here, this is going to can show me some open um, purchase requisitions that I have out there for the supplier, or excuse me, for the product. Okay. So I can go ahead and include those items you know, for the quantity. Go ahead and say OK. Have my product descriptions. I have the warehousing site into which the goods will ultimately be received. The address of that facility. I've got my quantity that I wish to purchase. If there's a particular project code associated with this uh, order, that can be defined. Here's your expected, the date of the receipt. You can update that to whatever is appropriate. Okay. We have our gross price uh, 
coming in from the price book that we have established. We have our various discounts and adders that can be included to influence what our net price ultimately is. In this uh, legal analytical field here, this is the GL account number that's going to be associated with the job. Okay. The, here in the purchase type uh, section, this is an area that you can come to to specify if it's a standard purchase, a purchase of a fixed asset, or a purchase of a service. We have some matching tolerance rules that we can define in X3 uh, to help us control, um, say, vendors that are problematic that may overbill us or maybe ship us too much product or ship us products that are too, you know, behind schedule. These matching tolerance rules can help us with the management of those vendors. We have, then finally, we have some dimensional information here on the wide. Okay. So I'm going to come over here and click on create. Once the order number is assigned, we can come over and click on our printer icon, then come down to record. We're going to choose this top reporting option, this bond CDE2 report. Click on the print button here at our reports parameter screen. And this will generate for us the crystal report. Um, for the supplier. We have our PO number, we have the receiving address, the product and the pricing information. Next here, let's go ahead and take a look at some useful inquiries as it relates to purchasing within X3. So again, under my purchasing block, I'm going to scroll down to inquiries, then over here to orders. So two inquiries here that would be of particular interest to you. If you come to the list of orders option, here in this inquiry, this kind of provides you with all the header level information uh, on your orders. You have a variety of filters here to filter on company, on site. Uh, you can filter on supplier, date range, whether or not the order is open versus not. Then down here in the grid section, you have your PO number, the supplier, the amount of the order, terms of payment, okay, invoicing site, information pertaining whether or not the order has been received or invoiced yet, whether it's been you know, closed out or printed. Then from the action button here on the line, you also have the capability to tunnel back to the purchase order itself. The inquiry right below that here in this list, this order lines inquiry. This inquiry is uh, similar in nature. You have a lot of the same filters here at the top. Um, the additional thing being is that you can also filter on a particular product. Then down here in the grid section, once again, you have the PO number, the supplier, the date of the order, expected receipt date. Then you have your uh, product information in here also in terms of the SKUs and the quantities, how much has been received yet and invoiced. Finally here, let's go and take a look at uh, some of the different analytical reports that we have associated with our purchase orders. So to look at some of these reports, if we come out under our printouts menu, then to our prints by group, then to purchasing, then down here to lists. Two of the commonly used reports within this register uh, this top one here, this NAPO list, purchase order list. Then we also have this P order L detail purchase order list. 
So when we go ahead and run those reports, here's an example of what the NAPO list looks like. It's primarily sorted by site, then you have the supplier, then here's all the purchase orders for that supplier with all the products on the POs. You have an indicator as to whether or not the order is still open, the expected date of the receipt, and the order quantity. And the other report um, in here, this detailed purchase order list, the P order L. Again, we have our uh, site specification, your order number, with all the respective products uh, on the purchase order. So one final thing to note um, as it relates to the order inquiries, uh, you also have a view of your orders from the supplier master record. So if I come up under my common data menu, then come down to my options for BPs, then over here to suppliers. I can go ahead and choose a supplier and I'll see over here in my right hand list I have an inquiry section then under the inquiry section I can inquire on the order headers or the order lines and that will tunnel me directly into those inquiry menus that I was looking at prior but just for that particular vendor. So those are some of the main features as it relates to the uh, purchase order and uh, order reporting capabilities within X3.